Podcast live with Nintendo Switch. My name is Nate, uh, and I'm here with some very special guests. I have Mr. Aonuma and yep. Mr. Miyamoto, um, and they are accompanied by their translators, Noriko and Raymond, who are going to help me out as we go through what is my favorite segment of the entire day. Uh, we get to take people uh, into the world of Hyrule and take a deeper look at uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. So let's get right to it. And actually, we're going to start out, this is, I think, probably most people's first look at the UI of the Nintendo Switch. So um, I'm just going to boot the game directly out of here and get to it. Yep. You guys ready? Okay. <laughs> Time to go on an adventure here. So um, we are going to start out uh, in a place that is fairly familiar to anybody who played the game in E3 or who has followed our coverage. Um, it's, we're starting out on the Great Plateau, which is basically the introductory area of the game. And you spend some time there, and then for me, one of the, my favorite moments of the game is the moment you get to step off the plateau and into the greater world, because it's huge. E3 であのすでにゲームをプレイされている方はもうご存知かと思いますけれども、あの始まりの大地から始めますので、まああのネートの一番あの好きなあのシーンなんですけども、これは高いところからここからチャンプして飛び降りるここから始めさせていただきます。そうですね。あのブレスオブザワイルドは高いところに登ってそこからこう下にこうドーンとこうねあの降りていくこの爽快感が一番重要なところなんで、それは気に入ってもらってるとは非常に嬉しいですね。I'm so excited that you actually like um, jumping off of a high cliff or high places because that's one of the, um, the greatest features of Breath of the Wild. Yeah. So we should say that essentially you can jump off the, the plateau in, in any direction. I mean, players are not, there's not a specific way they have to go. We're just going to choose to go in one direction. I think I'm going to head down here. So you, can, so you can see, as you can see, like even far, far ahead, you, um, that's all connected. It's all, it, you can go anywhere out. Anywhere that you can, uh, anywhere that you can see, you can go anywhere. I'm going to start out down here and maybe, I think we're going to go and try to catch ourselves a horse. So I think Nate's going for the horse here. So I'm going to try to land on it. Oh. <laughs> Taming horses is not easy. <laughs> so if you're actually good and the timing is right, then, uh, then um, you, can, you can get on the horse. And then one of the trick is to um, kind of duck like this, what Nate's doing right now, and then approach the horse quietly. Get it up. Get it up. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. <laughs> 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 So you can see at first the horse is kind of swaying from right to the left and then it's not really obeying what you want to do and that's because the horse is not used to you yet. Um, and then um, if the horse kind of acts up then you can, um, you can tame it a little bit. And then you can see See that little um, the pink effect. Oh, easy, buddy. Easy. Oh, there we go. Ah, that effect right there. Oh, and then the more um, of those taming effects that you get, the more um, the horse will be tamed. And then once it's tamed, um, it'll start running where the roads are. Once it's tamed, it'll start running where the roads are. Oh yeah. So without without me actually guiding it. Yeah, that's right. It's really important too because I think that the world is so big that there are times when you want to ride and look around, you know, sort of examine your surroundings, see like a place that you might want to go next, see if there are some enemies approaching. You know, it's it's important to have a horse that obeys <laughs> the pathways. Alright, so I'm making my way, I guess this is, we're going a little bit west here, but... Yeah, 
移動したりするのが楽しいですね。Yeah, like you said, since、um, the horse will be、uh, riding, uh, running a,、uh, along the tracks,、uh, along, uh, along the road,、uh, you can kind of pan the camera around and then see your surroundings and enjoy the view. He's got a little guy with a pack back there. So I'm approaching one of the many stables in the game. Maybe Mr. Andrew can tell us a little bit about that. うまいです。まあ、あのちょっとルピーを要求されますけど。<笑> You're have to pay a little bit of rupees, but、um, you can register them here. でね、一旦ここに登録しておくと、あの馬をこう馬でこう遠くまで行って、えー、その先なんかやって、そのまま馬を掘ってどっか行っちゃって、どこに馬行ったのか分かんなくなっても、馬宿に行って、あの馬呼び寄せてって頼むと、ここにあのすぐ呼び出してくれます。So, once you register the horse, when you're exploring out in the world and then you kind of、um, get off the horse and you don't, you, you don't know where the horses are anymore, your horses anymore, you can go back to the stable and then ask for your horse and they'll bring it back to you. And then you can name it however you like. Not to Epona. Epona, you guys, you don't know what it is. So, this man. This time around,、uh, you can <laughs> ride all different kinds of horses、uh, aside from Epona. Yeah, so the,、um, they're, and some are easier to break than others.、Uh, there are horses that are, are,、um, they have, tend to have more spurs, they have more energy, but those are also harder. You can't, I mean, you saw that first one that I was trying to land on. He fucked me right off. He tried to kick me. So、um, you can get a gentler. I think the, the gentler horses are. Easier to, to catch, but maybe aren't as strong when it comes to horses that you want to ride. 馬によってはあのスタミナだったり速さだったりそういったあの違いがありますけれどもやっぱりちょっと強めの馬っていうのはあの名付けにくいで,でもあのもうちょっと優しくてあのさっきネイトがあの落とされたような馬ではなくてもうちょっと乗りやすいような馬だともうちょっと名付けやすくってでもあのまあスタミナとかスピードが足りなかったりするっていうようなそういうふうな面白い要素もありますよね。そうですねあの今こうやって馬に犬が<笑>あ犬が来た、oh. ah, there's a dog. あ犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た犬が来た So, I'm going to say, 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 I'm g o This wild world、um, are places where human beings congregate.、Um, people of all races really come here.、Uh, and as you see, I'm just talking to this guy. There's a lot you can learn about the world and a lot that you might need to do in the world when you interact with all the people at the stables. であのこの馬宿はすごくいろんな人があらゆるところから集まってきていてであのここであの次に何をすればいいのかとかあの世界では何が起こっているのかっていうような情報収集もできる貴重な場所ですよそうですねあのここにああのここをあの拠点にしてあのこう旅をしている人なんかもいるのでいやあのそこだけじゃなくて周りからもいろんな情報が集まってくるっていうねそういう場所になってますね。So, there's a lot of people that are using this as,、uh, the stable as a base and then are traveling、um, in the world. So,、um, it's kind of interesting to see、um, that you can collect a lot of different kinds of information here. So, I,、uh, we've of course discussed shrines before, they're all over the place.、Um, I'm going to jump into this one and,、uh, and show our viewers、uh, a little bit of the inside of the shrine. But while I did, I was kind of hoping that Mr. Miyamoto and Mr. Anuma could talk a little bit about. These awesome things that we have on the table in front of us. レイトが今、ほこらにあのたくさんあるうちの一つのほこらに入りますけれども、あのその間にこのアミーボを紹介していただけないでしょうかと、うん。はい、じゃあ、紹介しましょう。えっと
E3 の時にねもうすでにご紹介してますけどこの馬に乗った、えー、リンクのアミーボ。So during E3, we've already、um, talked about some of these amiibos. So, this Archer Link. So, this Guardian. So, this is the Guardian. So, this is the Guardian. So, this is a Guardian、um, amiibo. And then, as you can see, you can bend the legs. As the Any way that you want, and this is actually、um, a first of its kind. So, this is the first time she's appearing as an amiibo. So, this is the first time she's appearing as an amiibo. This is the first time she's appearing as an amiibo. This is the first time she's appearing as an amiibo. This is the first time she's appearing as an amiibo. This is the first time she's appearing as an amiibo. This is the first time she's appearing as an amiibo. And this is an enemy called Bokoblin, and then, as you can see, <laughs> It's really well made. The Zelda Hime, the Mito Morata Vacarioni, or Link to Cochera Cabra. Cochic Cabra. Link to Onajikono Aoi Fuko Kitemasne. As you can see, when I put them together like this, you can see, but Zelda is actually wearing this blue tunic that,、um, that Link is wearing as well. Ato, Jitsua Teni, Koreano. シーカースレートってやつですけど、リンクが持ってるやつと同じものを持ってますね。And then in Zelda's hand, you can see the s h i k a s l i k which is something that Link also has. これね。<笑>まあそのあたりはゲームの中でいろいろ明かされていきますので、また楽しみにしていってほしい。この。But、um, details you can、um, find out in the game, so I think、um, you'll have fun discovering these information. <笑>このボコブリンがね。はい。いっぱい出てくるんですね。いろんな種類が。いろんな種類が出てくる。カーブンズ、actually many different types of bokoblins, is that right? だんだんとね、敵として可愛くなってくる。そうですね。After you fight them so long, it's they start to kind of grow on you, actually. あの、totally. 一番ゲームの中で、あのしょっちゅう出てくる。ね、本当にうるさいわっていう<笑>出てくる。敵です。<笑> it's、um, one of the enemies that you'll encounter a lot throughout the game, and it's almost A little annoying, but it's, it's still very cute. <laughs> you know, it might be the first time that we've created、um, a product with so much detail of an enemy character. Um, while we were discussing Amiibo, now you're done with the shrine. Yeah,、so. we,、uh, with the viewers at home, were watching me solve it. I, I didn't want to completely solve it, so I decided to bail out and go back out into the world so we don't spoil too much for people at home. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. So, when you actually、uh, clear any of those shrines, not only do you get abilities, but it also becomes a, a warp point. And so, you know, whether it's warping or taking the horse or using the paraglider or just rolling off a cliff, there's many ways that you can get to places. I love climbing up hills and then jumping off them. The Epona was a car in the next one, but it was a car in the next one. It was a car in the next one. It was a car in the next one. It was obviously from Ocarina of Time, but this time you can actually whistle for your、uh, horse. But you know, sometimes you're just tempted to just whistle just for the sake. Now, I'm going to go to the next one. And then earlier,、um, it, was a, it, it didn't have any saddles on it, but now. It has a pretty cool saddle on. あの馬宿に登録するとこの蔵とそれからあの口笛で呼ぶとあのえっと来てくれるっていうあのそういう性能が加わります。Once you register these horses at the stable,、um, it'll have it'll you can put on the、um, the saddle and then、um, another spec where if you blow your whistle, blow a whistle, it'll come right up to you. 今度の馬っていうのは大事なのは先頭にも使う。ね、だから勝手にこうして道を走ってくれる AI がすごく優秀なんです。So something important、uh, about the horses this time around is you can also use them for battle, so the AI becomes really important. で、まあ2年前からね、馬が勝手に気を避けていくんですって簡単には言ったけども、どうしてそれを実現するかっていうのは、実はこの動物のためにプログラマー専用のプログラマーがいて AI を作ったり、だからデザイナーも
、動物ね、ものすごい種類の動物出てくるんですけど、四つ足の動物から、からそれはね、みんなあの一生懸命三年間作り続けたみたいな結晶ですね。<笑> You know, it's, it's a really,、um, when we were creating these animals, there's actually a, a programmer and like a designer specifically dedicated to these animals, and horse being one of them. And there's many, many different types of animals that come out in the game. And you know,、uh, the designers and programmers spent a lot of time, three years, really perfecting and, and crafting these animals so that they become really, really natural. I'm getting out of there. He was in danger. I didn't want to get. I didn't want to. You really have to take care of your horse. That's the thing is that you care about this animal that you, you sort of domesticated a little bit. But、wow. I also wanted to point out that Mr. Wizard Gimbo was talking about other animal life. You, know, you look around, and this is a living world. You know, everywhere there's there's birds, there's beasts, there's things growing.、Um, there's just stuff everywhere. It feels very, very,、uh, very much like it's a living place.、Um, and I also wanted to point out that.、Uh, You guys probably saw when I went into that battle with these guys really unsuccessfully. That、um, one of the advantages the horse gives you is that you can jump off it and go into slow motion,、um, which gives you an automatic advantage if you actually hit. I、uh, missed it, Nate. I did miss it. I was talking.、Uh, it gives you an automatic advantage. Okay, it's, it's like jumping off something.、Um, you gotta be better at this, Nate. I know, right? <laughs> Trying to talk at the same time. Come on. But anyways, regardless of whether or not you're using、um, the grip or whether you're using a pro controller, you can use fine-tune aiming、um, with the bow like this. グリップでもプロ使っていてもプロコンを使っていてもあのこういうふうなすごい繊細なあのコントロールっていうのができるのが今回の魅力です。そうですね。あのどちらも同じようにコントロールできます。Yeah, you can control it the way,、um, however you want in any controllers. それとねあの馬の乗り降りなんですけども、まあエプラの場合はこっから乗りなさいって決まってたんですけど、今度ねものすごい多彩な乗り方をしてくるんですね。そうですね。プレイヤーが。And with、um, how you actually get on the horse with Hippona, you, there was a specific, that you had, a specific way that you had to get on the horse. But this time around, there's many, many different ways that you can get on the horse. Nate, go from the front. 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 From the neck. Oh! 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 あのやっぱりあの動物とかとこうねいろいろこうあのいろんなあのさっき餌やったりとかいろんなことができるようになって馬に対してもいろいろできるようになってそれから気持ちよくねいろいろできるように一生懸命あの時間かけて調整してるそれをねこう味わってほしい。So、um, we've added a lot of elements, like we talked about earlier, taming the,、um, the horses or giving food to the horses. But、um, everything's kind of streamlined and feels really natural. So I want the players to enjoy, to be able to enjoy that aspect of the game as well. And then it's really another fun element is battle while you're still on the horse. Can I help these guys out? I guess I can. Looks like a couple of travelers they were actually getting way laid. You can actually hit the enemies with the horse and then.、Um, okay. <laughs> でこのねさっきあ,あの青沼言ったこう気持ちよく動けるっていうのはすごい大事でこのハイラルの世界をちょっと気持ちよく歩き続けるために登るとか走るとかものすごく手をかけてるんですね。And like、uh, Mr. Anuma mentioned, the, the, the fact that it really feels good to do all these actions, that's a really important aspect. So we really made sure that it's fun to, whether you're climbing around or running around, it just feels right to be doing so in this world. Even just like sliding down a hill, it feels good, it feels right. And to create that vision of feeling just right, we made sure that even the,、uh, the hooves hitting the ground is just right, so the animator and the sound、uh, char in charge really work together to make sure that it matches. And you, as you can see, it actually makes the sound、um, when the, the foot, when the heel hits the ground. So, when you're going to go to the ground, you're going to go to the ground. 
Um, so if if the um, the sound doesn't match the movement of the horse, then that means um, the motion is kind of off. And these are the little details that we really put our thought into while developing this game. Well, one other detail that is overarching that I love is that it, because this is the weather system, the day and night oh. cycle is constantly going on its own, th this scene will look totally different for whoever plays it because they'll arrive at a different time of day. The, it might be raining, it might not, it might be a thunderstorm. Every player is going to experience this in a totally different way. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
not going to embarrass myself any further by dying continually in front of two of my heroes. So um, we're going to move on to uh, our next segment. We are going to actually finish up with a, a close look at 1-2-Switch, which is not to be missed. Um, but before then, we've got something else for you. Um, I will tell you all about it on the other side of the break. Thank you. Thanks, guys.